Hello, this serves as tips and trips for using Tableau to analyze the Small Business Administration data set, which is published. Um, probably one of the things that we'll talk about is if you look at a small data set description, which is, should this loan be approved or denied, the data is stored on Kaggle, what you're able to see is a, a good understanding of the SBA data set. Now the SBA data set is a rich data set. It's live data, it's governmental data, so it's published, it's real. So we're applying real world outcomes to understanding how to make business decisions going forward in the future. Now certainly in the scope of this video or this purpose of this exercise, we're not going to do any statistical analysis or any meaningful statistical analysis. It will be a very light. However, what we will talk about is just how to visualize some of this, this information because not everything has to be 100% statistical. What you can do are some visual analytics and put some of that visual correlations and things of that nature. But to analyze this data, you have to think about what it is. Small Business Administration was really published, I believe, started in 1953. Its, its whole purpose is to promote business. Now, the key to any data analysis is to really get to understand the data. And in this file, there are links to what the variables can be because there's variables in the data set. So let's go in and let's pop over here because if you can get to the Kaggle link, you know, the data set should this loan be approved, you click on Kaggle and that will actually open the data set and you can download it from this. You'll have to have an account in Kaggle to download it. In this case, if you're in one of my classes, you'll be able to download the data set from the assignment. But you can see, you can click on this icon here and you can download the data. Um, and it tells you information about every field in, and you'll also notice Kaggle actually shows you some statistics by every single one of the fields that are in the system. It gives you kind of a distribution to understand what's going on. It's in North Carolina, mostly California stuff, Bank of America, Wells Fargo. It gives you a little bit of information before you even get started. It's a relatively large data set and it comes down to a CSV file. Now, it's important as we go through this to understand it. Just the second fi file I had was the full article which should I borrow the month? You need to pay attention to this article because it gives you a lot of information about the abstract. Like I said, we're not going to be doing multivariate analysis or anything complicated like that, but we are going to do some visualizations for it. And the point of this video is just to give you tips and tricks, right, on how you can look at this data. So looking at it, like I said, go in, I thought I opened it, but if not, we'll scroll down through it. And the key to this exercise on any data set is to read the information. Now here you'll see the variables, which are the field names that they have, the primary key, the, it tells you borrower name. It also goes in, look, one is existing business, two is new business. So it talks about whether it's a new business. So small, the, the Small Business Association, is, SBA, is really designed to help organizations or really to spawn entrepreneurial growth in America. It creates a lot of jobs, it does a lot of social goods. So you shouldn't just focus the analysis on pure hard numbers. You should also look at the social good that's created. And you know, did the SBA achieving their zip their job when they go into zip codes that are maybe not as fluent as other zip codes and need need to get a boost in small business? That's not a bad thing, right? It's a, it could be a good thing to spawn growth. Um, number of jobs created. You got to go through every field. So it's urban or rural. Rural. Urban is one. Two is rural zero is undefined. So maybe you have to exclude the zeros from an analysis of urban and rural. Um, revolving line of credits. Revolving line of credit tells you just that somebody might have good credit terms because it's like a credit card, right? You get to spend up to your limit, you pay it off, you can still come back and spend up to your limit. It's revolving. You don't really end up, it's not like a loan that you're not revolving. In other words, you borrow 100,000, you pay it, and that's it, your loan's over. You can apply again to see what you can get the next time, but it's a single instance, single action where revolving means you can use it over and over again. So it's probably an indication of good credit if somebody issues you revolving credit. So that might be one indicator. They don't seem to have in this data set, you know, loan your credit scores and those kind of things, but they do have revolving credit. So you may use that. Um, loan doc, loan, num loan program, yes or no. Um, the date when a loan is declared to be in default. So that's important. Now the dates in this file are kind of weird. They do give you a start date like 2003. So I would use those years before converting the other date. 
disbursement days, the day they actually gave you the money. But like I said, those dates are counting in days and there's like 15,000 and something. You might have to divide by 365 and figure out when the start date was. The amount dispersed, the gross amount outstanding. So amount dispersed is how much money that they gave. Now you think about it, banks go through this program and I guess the government backs them up. And what happens with the SBA is they'll come in and they'll actually issue you, you'll apply for a loan and they'll give you money. So banks have to actually decide who is credit worthy, who is not credit worthy. They take, a, they take a risk on understanding whether this field will be good or not. But to analyze this data, you, there's different codes in this data set to tell you what industries and companies are trying to start businesses. So some industries and companies types might tend to fail. Like we saw some of that in the early 2000s where we had a lot of dot coms, while some were certainly amazingly successful, right? Your Googles of the world, the Amazons, those were two of millions that maybe were not. So, but that doesn't mean that you shouldn't invest in them. It just means that, you know, not everything succeeds. The gross amount outstanding, that means how much loan is out there. The loan status, whether it's charged off, charged off means that um, they weren't able to collect the money and they just wrote it off as a bad debt expense. It was unfortunate and they weren't able to pay. Paid in full means the person that borrowed the money got it. So that's PIF, paid in full, or charged off. Charged off are bad. So the MIS status, or admission status, I suppose, is really, was a loan paid or not paid? Could you, if you're trying to make a business decision and trying to just figure out what's going on, you want to be, if people, when you notice that loans are paid off, those might be indications of good loan practices. The gross amount of the loan approved by the bank. So the bank actually has its own credit terms. And then, so the person might apply for a million, SBA might have said 800,000, but the bank says 600,000. The SBA is guaranteed amount of the approved loan. So that's what I was just talking about. So if they apply for a million, SBA maybe says, I'll approve half of that. And the bank gives you 750,000. It just depends on what that is. In this case, new if new exists to new business, zero if, if new exists equal one. So this looks like a recurring number. You'll have to break it down. Equal one if new business, if new exists is two. So there's two, it's actually depending on, on new business and or existing business. So it's going to actually, it's, this is actually, that's like an if then condition. So basically one, if new existent, but the other field is a two, which means it's a new business or if it's existing business, zero. So it's just saying it's a new business. Um, proportion of gross amount guaranteed by it. SBA, we understand proportions. Proportions are basically the ability to, to just to under know, are we giving lending more money than what the SBA is improving? So if somebody applied for, a, let's stay with the simple numbers, a million dollar loan, and the SBA approved 600,000 and we're lending at 700,000, we're 100,000 above what the SBA approved, right? So just something to think about. And probably the SBA loans are actually gonna be a lot less than that. So maybe somebody applied for a loan of 50,000 and the bank approves 40,000, but the SBA approves 30,000. So you, you can see how that will break out, probably much more realistic. This is an important one. Equals one of loan is backed by real estate, zero otherwise. So if somebody's backing a loan with their home or something that they have, a, in this case, real estate that they have a value, that's an important indicator. And this makes a difference because it means that somebody's putting their house on the line or a key property to them because if they're going to apply for a hundred thousand dollar loan and they have a say a hundred fifty thousand dollar property and they're putting their property as collateral against that loan it means the bank's risk of losing money goes way down it, but the person's assuming all the risk if their business fails because they put their house up there so it's a very risky endeavor for the person but not so much a risk endeavor for the bank so less risk for them and those kind of things. So this probably ties in pretty tightly to loan defaults and not. So you want to see who's giving asset back. This is like an asset, real estate is an asset, asset back loans and who's doing that. Recession, if loan is active during the Great Recession. So they tell you, you know, we think about the Great Recession, the actual year, they actually put this in a data set. So it actually shows you that the number of defaults per recession, you can actually scan the years by the inception date of the loan and then see whether it goes over that recession period. So that's a pretty important one. This one here, if the data are selected as training data to build or model for the assignment, 
okay so some people can go through and then deal with this training data this is default day stream these are probably more technical we'll skip some of those because they're not probably relevant to just understanding how to do it then they actually have these look at these they have these codes in here where they're looking at different fields and industries so some industries so don't be afraid to look at certain industries and see which industries are good investments which ones are not good investments they go through a whole bunch of entity codes in the sector and analysis so you have to go through the data set so variable name data type but then the sectors tell you all the industry so you can actually look at the co codes and say maybe isolate your data present it by industry and determine which industries are more riskier and than others and see if you can predict defaults by industry um you know we, we can make assumptions but we don't really know until we analyze the data that's probably a good segue into talking about analyzing the data and what that means and how to approach it. At this level, we want to think about it and the way you want to do, start your analyzation is understand your project scoping. Like, what am I doing? So this case study is about the SBA and should we lend the money or not is a good business decision. So if you're trying to decide that, you know, looking at the indicators, we're clearly just going to focus on this. We may use one or two other data sets to understand things that are important, maybe social indicators would be important to look at here. Maybe get indicators. This, this data set has a lot of California zip codes. Uh, we saw that in the data set. So you may want to grab demographic information for California, and then you can tie that in using a key linking field like zip code, that's pretty good. Then you want to build hypotheses. Now there's a discussion in the business world in, in versus academia and vice versa. And I've been on both sides of this, where you build a hypothesis. Like for example, when I went in and I mentioned that asset bank, bank loans, asset backed loans were important. And people tend not to lose their homes who were willing to put their homes up against a loan, tip probably wouldn't default that much. That was a hypothesis I have. Because I think this is a key asset for people. And so it was a hypothesis. So I, I would go and explore that hypothesis and say, oh yes, I would go with this. Because if I look at every single field out there that they have in the, in the database, when you looked at that detailed listing of everything, you would actually should build a hypothesis. What do you think correlates to the other thing? What do you think impacts the other? Um, city, maybe, maybe the city by zip code, lower income cities might yield more default or not. You know, maybe people in lower income cities need, need these kind of SBAs more than type loans more than anybody else and they're probably maybe they're more successful but that might be a hypothesis that you build in i certainly went with a hypothesis that i believe that if you're putting your house up as collateral you're really incented to do well and you're not going to just give up easily so you know loan term in months that might be another one that you do a hypothesis on um if you're paying back a hundred thousand dollar loan in say or say, make it simple, $120,000 loan in 12 months, you have to pay the principal plus interest back in that period of time. The payments are pretty big. So you're assuming you're making a lot of money each month to pay it back because at the end of the period, $120,000 loan, you're going to be paying $10,000 per month plus the interest. So that's a big bill versus loan term. If you're borrowing $120,000 and it's a 20-year loan, then you're probably not going to be paying that much per month. you be paying a lot less. Certainly, so I think that the strain on the business from a cash flow point of view might be another hypothesis to what might drive failure. So once you get these hypotheses, these hypotheses in, you, you start doing data discovery, you get data acquisition. Now we had the, the loan file and you can certainly go to um, the Kaggle database and you can download it. Here's the Kaggle database, SBA loans. And you can see it if you go to Kaggle SBA loans case data set, and then you simply go to the download site. Now I have this on the assignment, I covered this before. And you can look at all the fields and everything, what kind of fields they are. Just keep in mind that when you do this, you're gonna, like I said, go through, understand the data, look at the data. We'll pull it into Kaggle in a minute, but build your hypotheses first, guys. This is very helpful. It also saves you a lot of time by not having to run around. Now in industry, I said there was two things to think about. In industry, I was certainly there and the thoughts from like Oracle and SAP were like, no, look at the data first, that the data tell, they would be very strong cases and you would hear it in the conferences, that the data tell you what's there. Look for these correlations that are there. We can explore all the data and all the correlations because of very big, powerful platforms and they would automatically spit out reports. 
and you'd have spurious type relationships that maybe make sense, maybe maybe don't make sense. So just because it's correlated doesn't mean it makes sense. And we can have a whole conversation that, but I'll save that for the statistics classes. This is more just about doing visual analytics and introducing data loads into Tableau, doing it. You may have to transform that data, it may not come in cleanly. Even when you do, Tableau brings it in and you may have to tr transform how the fields are designed. Some fields should be geographic oriented. Some fields should not be measured. They should be dimensioned. So you want to do this. Then you want to start building your models. Think about it. You built these hypotheses. So start building visual representations of, the, of what you thought down. Write three of those in a row. Like I think this is a, a correlation between this and this or correlation between this and this. What are the things that drive? And just start simple. This is a, like if many cases, this is your first analysis, you're doing visual analytics. Then you do the analytics, do the graphs and say, oh, wow, add some colors and things like that. Look at the outcomes. Are they insightful? Now, try to avoid situations where you're not comparing things on a relative basis. Try to use ratios to compare things on a relative basis. Looking at gross dollars is informational. Like this is the total amount of loans we gave per city. And these are, this is the total defaults in number for a city, but we don't actually know how many loans were given in a city. So if you don't have that, like say a default rate, a rate of default, say, let's say LA had four defaults out of a hundred loans and it's 4%, but let's say maybe another city in California had two defaults. You would say, oh, LA is bad, this one is good. But if they had two defaults, they only gave out two loans, their default rate's a hundred percent. So understand the outcomes, understand what you're looking at, try to use relative measures and then it's a circle. Start again. It's like here's what I discovered. Maybe maybe your hypothesis wasn't right, or maybe you let the data look at it and you can't really figure out why the data is showing that it's correlated between your maybe you did an accidental correlation between the loan number and default rates. That's interesting, but it doesn't really add mo more value because the loan number is just a, a number that identifies the categorical variable. It's like your social security number doesn't mean how much money you'll make in life. It just it's a number. It's a sign, but it's not something that you would analyze. That's the problem with this doing random data discovery. You want to do logical hypothesis building and think about from a business sense. If you spend time doing this, it'll make your analysis much cleaner and crisper. Then you can go into your analysis and start building things. So let's actually grab the data. So here we are, Tableau is open. It's a text file that we downloaded. Grab the data and say, open. If you bring it to Excel first, know it's a text file there, and we can make this large. Now I said, look at to load the data. It was a city, that's pretty clear. It should have a geographical role, and it does. The state, the zip. So we have state, state, zip. Look, here's loan, loan number. Okay, so you probably don't want to aggregate this number. I made a couple hypotheses, but if you go through it, bank state, this is just the state that the bank is in. Now this might have a correlation if a bank is lending to companies in California, but the state, the bank is based in Nevada. Maybe they don't understand the local market conditions. So that could be something. NAICS is more of a code associated with, it's more of a string, right? It's more of a code associated with the job categories and those things. The approval date, look at the number sequence here, 15-074, probably a day count. But they do go further and give you an approval year, 2001. And you can see the years of 2000, whoops, like that, 2001. So you know the year that was there. So if you're getting the bad date conversion as you did in Excel in 1940, that, that's incorrect. So that date needs to be deciphered. And that's an interesting to look up. So that's staying, understanding your data is key. What date are they using for that? The term is a loan term. That's important. So that might have it. Number of employees. Well, this is interesting. Do larger companies default the same as smaller companies? You might want to think about grouping it and showing it that way, at least visually in Tableau. Um, does it create jobs? This is social good. Are we creating jobs? Are we retaining jobs? When we give this loan, are we helping companies just keep all the people employed? That could be a social good and very powerful message. Like I said, don't make this all either it is or isn't. Take a moment to really understand the social ramifications of these SBA loans. It makes a difference. It's really important. Small businesses benefit a lot of areas of the country. The franchise code, urban or rural, um, we covered that. Review line center, you go back to the code, look at it. Low doc, charge off dates. Charge off dates are bad. Not everybody's going to have a charge off date. And we have to decipher that code to see what that is, disbursement date. But if nothing else, like I said, you have the 2003 number. 
the dates might be there. Maybe the base will help you understand from time to start of loan to the time that it defaulted, how long it was in duration before default. The balance, you can see they have balances as you scroll through. The MIF paid in full or charge off. So you have the charge off information. You can probably count these pretty well in that regard. And that would be good. Um, SBA approval, what the SBA, gross approval, SBA approval. So here you go. The loans are, some loans are big, but some loans are not big. Like gross approval, 30,000, FBA, SBA approved 50% of that. So that was interesting. In the case, they did portion 50%. Recession, it tells you whether it was indicated during the recession or not. Then you had some of those system calculus that they had in there that they put in there we didn't pay too much attention to. So it was really interesting. Now, if you're going to grab other data sets, think an awful lot about the city and zip code because the data sets, you could probably link it to other data sets with this key field. Um, you might be able to link with the zip with the city names as well. But a lot of times zip code data is available for many other things that you can look at and it ties in really good. So at a high level, you can grab California demographic information or you know GDP for California if, if they has available. Or you can get lower level information by the zip code. So if you're gonna link data, link it in by zip code. And like I showed you already how to grab data, and this is a very large data set. So it's kind of good, it's like an introduction to big data analysis. And when you go in, also not everything's a measure, right? You have measures and dimensions up here. If you look at some things, you know, you just gotta think about should all these, did they all come in right? Or some of these really dimensions and not, and not the other? So you have to look at like the dates are clearly a measure. That's cool, create jobs, that's the number count. Maybe it could be a dimension. You may want to take this and, you know, just categorize it, convert to dimension, for the creates jobs or not. It's just a categorical, vertical, categorical variable that you need to think about in that regard. It's really early in the morning, in a crisp Tallahassee day. Um, real estate asset back, this is another one. You know, this is the one or zero. You may want to create this as a dimension for sure, because that way you can just get the one and zero and be able to group and count things in dollars across dimensions. So you create a dimension, it will pop up into the dimension area. Then you can drag the dimension here. You can put it in columns and you have the zero and one. And then you can definitely take the um, disbursement gross or any other fields that you want to drop into the data and you'll have it broken out by the zero and ones. And you know, the real estate, so right now the gross disbursements you can see at a high level are much larger for real estate backed loans and not real estate backed loans. Well, that's interesting. And I didn't do anything but look at the analysis and I didn't hypothesize it. This is a good example of just letting the data tell you what's going on in that regard. So we just gave an example how I took it, dimensionalized the real estate because I thought it was more of a categorical variable in that regard, either real estate or it is or isn't. Honestly, you don't really need to do it that way. You could have summed it and counted it also. I just kind of like to look at things. And remember, you have to show me to start going after things. And you can see clearly the larger side over here. And you put number tables in to get difference. Or tree maps to show you the difference between one and two. You may want to put place the word one with something else, make it more nicer. Everywhere you go, you see the real estate, except for maybe there. The real estate is definitely, the real estate backed is more, Loans are bigger for real estate back versus not real estate back. And there's different ways of showing that. So don't be afraid to look at the different ways. I, I think there's some interesting things. That's not such a good way. That was definitely telling right here of what it is. That is also telling of the total loan, the total loans that they give. I think this is a better comparison. It really clearly jumped out at me that the real estate backed loans are super high in that regard. You may want to change it from, you can also play with it from some to maybe average to look at the, the measure from some the average real estate back loans. Oh yeah, look at the big difference. So the average of the disbursements are 120,000 for non-real estate backed. It seems like if you really want to get a big loan to start a business and your, and your business required capital, maybe manufacturing and things like that, you definitely need to think about um, having putting your assets behind your loan. So that's certainly an indicator and probably a correlation on these. Now, whether it defaults or not, I'm gonna let you do that part of your analyses. But we just wanted to start off doing some visual analytics 
Of course, I didn't do any statistical comparisons or anything like that in this phase, but I wanted to give you an example. Now, in the assignment, you know, right clicking, right clicking, saving link as, and you can put like the SBA Small Business Association project and then say OK, right clicking, because sometimes you just click on it, it will just open up in Notepad or something like that, and I give you the desired results. You can save the files down. And then this one here just means submitted presentation. And this one is blank until once I get all the presentations and I'll share it with everybody else and I'll put it in here and you save it down. So that's a good way of doing it. There's a video that's on here. So I put the URL over here, open the URL. And this is an example output that somebody put together, another student put together where he had analyzed the data. Remember, start big, start big, go low. If you go on a record by record or row by row basis, you're looking at individual loans. And maybe you can garner something from that. You can explore a data set. Maybe you can isolate something so you can actually look at the data set, open in Excel and say, let me just study one loan and see what I learned from that one very loan. But you want to take that high immediately. Even if you go after it very low, immediately, because you're going to make recommendations to a bank or should have lend money or something to influence policy, you're going to need to make it more at a higher level. The lower level detail is super interesting, but not definitive in nature. It might be a sample. It may not be enough. It's just that one loan. You don't know the circumstances of it. It could be a loan where a business is responsible or its success is dependent upon the person who runs that business. And if that person changes their lifestyle for whatever reason, they get sick, ill, or they have to move to another place and that business closes, that's maybe not a good indicator of the general population. So a higher level, we have more records is a better indicator of the population. Of course, you could use statistical information and those kind of things to analyze that and look at for significant levels and things like that. But that's beyond the scope of this. We're only playing with visual analytics and some examples of, um, you can see, don't be afraid to do that. And these waterfall charts are fantastic to understand how things start from one side to the other to explain movement, um, amount dispersed, gross amount. You can see the loans, loan PIF, load charged off, gross profit, grand total. So this person went through and they really broke a waterfall chart down to understand how the bank went from one side to the other and whether it was a profitable business. So they did really good there. Um, some nice donut charts as well. And all these are on my analytics channel. As you can see how they really took it in and they evaluated how banks were making money. Looking at the banks that are in the player to a high level saying who's the key competitors, that's also good, but not probably enough to make a decision on unless you want to yield like, oh, Bank of America is running everything. Maybe we shouldn't enter the market where Bank of America is dominant. Fair point. But if you're a local bank and you have a local presence, maybe you have a better position than, say, a large national bank like Bank of America or Wells Fargo. So think about those things. I hope these tips and tricks are helpful. Help is, helps you understand the data a little bit because this is a, a good project. It's a healthy project. And we'll work on this project together. Um, certainly, I think that we understand these loans and everything else is good. But I wanted to stop here and wish you the best and